Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have three additional examples to help us understand how to work with the energy equation. Notice on the left side we have work put into the system plus the initial potential energy plus the initial kinetic energy equals the final potential energy plus the final kinetic energy plus the energy lost. Now with these examples you can see that we have some room to play with the concept of what the initial potential energy is because we can choose the initial height to be anywhere we like for every mass in the system. So let me show you. So here on the first one, notice that we have no work put into the system. We do have potential energy for the second mass because it starts at a height h above the ground and we know it's going to come down. But m1 is going to remain at the same height, so we can call that the zero height for m m1, so there's no potential energy associated with m1. There's no kinetic energy because the whole system starts at rest. Afterwards, when this reaches the bottom, the potential energy for M2 is now zero because it's reached the bottom. M1 has no potential energy because we call the reference height for M1 the tabletop, so there's no final or initial potential energy for M1. It doesn't change. They both do have kinetic energy. They're both moving at V final, and we add the two masses together, and it's one-half MV squared. Obviously, we add the two masses together for the total mass of the system. The whole mass, the whole system is moving at V. We solve that algebraically, and we get V final is equal to 2GH times the, fr the fraction M2 divided by M1 plus M2. Notice if we get rid of that, there's that the square root of 2GH again, but it's diminished by the fact that only M2 is causing, the change in height of M2 is causing both of them to move, so it's not going to move quite as fast as 2GH, the square root of 2GH. The difference between 7 and 8 is that the friction is not equal to 0 for 8. So now we also have to account for the energy loss. Everything else is the same as before, but now we have this energy loss term, and the energy loss is the, fric the, the work to overcome the friction, which is the friction force times distance. Notice that the distance traveled by M1 over this rough surface is the same as the height drop, so essentially D becomes H, and the friction force will be mg mu, in this case m1g g mu. So we still have m2g on the left side, 1 half m1 plus m2v squared on the right side, and then we have this additional energy loss term. When we solve this algebraically for v final, we get this. Notice that if you get rid of this, you end up with the exact same thing as what we had over there. But of course, we lost some energy, we have to account for that. On the third example here, now this is example 9 because we, we show you in groups of three. Now we have three objects, one on the left side, one on the right side, one on the tabletop, two pulleys, they're all connected together. Of course, if when this block drops by distance h, this block goes up by distance h. Mu is zero, just to keep it a little more simple. Notice we're going to use the concept again that Everything starts at zero height relative to itself. So this starts at zero height here, this starts at zero height there. No initial potential energy, no work put into the system, no initial kinetic energy because nothing is moving. What about afterwards? Well, notice that M1 has gained height. How much? H, so the potential energy afterwards relative to the initial potential, potential energy is, one, is M1GH. M3 has dropped, so it has lost potential energy. How much? By the amount minus M3GH. It's dropped MGH, and so we have to subtract that. All three are hooked together, so they all move at final velocity, and so we sum the masses together. We have one half total mass times V squared, and no energy loss due to friction. If we did, we'd have to add this term to it right here, but in this case, we don't have to. Solve that for V, notice again we get the square root of the 2GH, but in the numerator we have M3 minus M1 in the denominator, the sum of, the sum of all the masses in the whole system. M3 is what takes the whole system to move, M1 you have to pull it up so you lose some uh, potential energy due to the fact that you have to pull M1 up as M3 goes down. And that is the way you deal with problems like that when you, deal, when you use the energy equation. So you begin to see the the commonality, and notice how we can account for the fact that we can find zero height as the initial point for every mass in the system to make the equation a little bit easier. And that is how it's done.